Hello again, everyone, and thanks so much for joining us for this Saturday's edition of Alaska Weather. I'm Dave Percy, a meteorologist with the National Weather Service, and I'll be hosting today's show. Up first, uh, quite a bit of rain fell over interior Alaska today, lightened up uh, out to the uh, west and northwest coast from what you had yesterday. But uh, Indian Mountain picking up 2.83 inches, that 24-hour uh, rainfall amount uh, ending at 3 p.m. this afternoon. Coldfoot, uh, 2.3 inches, and Fairbanks picked up an inch and a half of rain. Even heavier amounts uh, occurred to the northeast in the, uh, like, Chena Ridge had about one and two-thirds inches of precipitation, and rainfall of about uh, a third to a half an inch fell across the upper Yukon Valley. And moving on to the hazardous weather graphic here, you can see uh, the yellow here, uh, southeastern Brooks Range, the Koyukuk Valley, Kobuk Valley, and down toward Galena. That's uh, for small stream flood advisories due to the uh, heavy rain that's occurred there. So uh, all the small streams in these uh, illuminated areas here are in the flood advisory stage. And that's uh, through tonight and into tomorrow. And then up here, the uh, eastern Arctic coast, that's a wind advisory that's uh, due to kick into effect, I believe, at 7 a.m. tomorrow until uh, Seven, or at least into Sunday night up there as winds uh, increase, kick up to gusts 50 miles per hour. And also wind advisory here for the eastern or the upper Tanah Valley in the 40 mile country. That's for uh, gusty winds uh, tonight into possibly early, early tomorrow. And uh, then the coastal flood warning out here, that ends at 10 p.m. tonight for the Yukon Delta coast, uh, eastern Norton Sound there, and then along the south coast Seward Peninsula they're over toward Nome, and again, that ends at 10 p.m. Saturday night this evening. And for the uh, St. Lawrence Island area up to uh, the Bering Strait Coast, that uh, uh, high surf advisory, that ends at 6 p.m. tonight. Uh, so just a couple more hours of that. And then I believe this one up here ends at 7 a.m. tomorrow morning, Sunday morning, for the uh, coastal flood advisory there for the uh, northwest coast. And that's for some possible minor beach erosion. Winds uh, gusting uh, as high as uh, 55 miles per hour in some areas here. Uh, Tin City, Bering Strait had gusts 56 miles per hour earlier today, and Nome, 46 miles an hour. So that's uh, enough to kick those seas up. And for the uh, fire danger map, uh, really gotten beaten back here with all the precipitation. Again, about a third to half an inch falling in the uh, Yukon Flats area. Lighter amounts though, so still an area of high to very high fire danger, but way up there uh, toward the southeastern or toward the southern, southern slopes of the eastern Brooks Range, right about in that location. That's about as small as I've seen it for quite some time. And uh, brought an area of uh, high fire danger back to the Kenai, Kenai Soldatna area today. And uh, also in the Copper River Basin, that expanded a little bit from what there was yesterday. And actually, there is embedded here in the valley a couple areas of extreme fire danger in that zone. And uh, probably due to uh, breezy conditions, of course, uh, temperatures in the sunny areas uh, well into the 70s today. On the satellite, you can see quite uh, vividly here, low pressure uh, or the frontal boundary, the back edge right through here, another wave there southwest of the Pribilofs. So there's rain and gusty winds from the eastern Aleutians up to the Pribilofs along the uh, frontal boundary into the southwest interior and then into the central and spreading east there eastern interior areas, and then back along the uh, North Slope and Arctic coast. And putting that into motion, you can see now it's off the, it's pushed off the coast, and this area pushing eastward there, past Arctic Village now, but still trailing across the uh, eastern interior. And along the Alaska Range, uh, showers trying to get into the Susitna Valley, not quite making it, but the farther north you go, the better chance there is. And this trailing back across the southwest interior, nearly an inch of rain in the last 24 hours falling at Bethel.
that uh, kind of a narrower band there of uh, heavier precipitation, either to the south or over the Yukon Delta, lighter amounts fell. But uh, pretty wet conditions here out across the uh, Pribilof Islands and then down across the Fox Island areas. And rolling that through again, uh, again, as this low tracks northeastward, Kotzebue had gusts uh, 35 to 40 miles an hour for the uh, winds with that system. And really 40 to 50 mile an hour winds pretty common here with this uh, over the, even in, into the interior areas. But those winds are gonna come down considerably tonight. Uh, some pretty good high pressure once this all moves through is gonna build in over the Bering Strait late tonight and into tomorrow. And that's gonna result in pretty light winds and no precipitation with clearing skies on the chart. Here's that uh, active low over the western north slope. Uh, Mid-afternoon today, had some thunderstorms break out due to a little bit of clearing that occurred in the warm sector of the system there south of the warm front. There's some clearing all the way back uh, to about this location, uh, roughly around uh, possibly Galena, Tanana, but uh, breaks in the clouds. That uh, allowed enough heating to take place that generated some uh, thunderstorms up in that area. And uh, one of those may have caught cold foot, and that's why they had such a good, uh, decent rainfall amount. Anyway, moderate amounts of rain with rainfall all the way to the southwest coast and along this other wave here just west of the Pribilofs into the Aleutians. Sunny skies, Kodiak Island, uh, at least on the east side there, Fognac Island up into uh, Kenai Peninsula. Some sunshine, Prince William Sound as well. Low clouds hugging the eastern North Gulf Coast from about Montague Island over to roughly Yakutat and down. Uh, possibly to Sitka, but partly in mostly sunny skies in over the southeast coast and also up over the eastern interior, not too bad. And for tonight, though, rain will slip into the uh, Northway and Toke area down from Eagle. Should become a little more showery or end up there toward Eagle. Uh, winds pretty gusty with that wind advisory out this evening there for the eastern Arctic coast. Again, could see gusts 50 miles an hour and still a risk of a thunderstorm possibly this evening. Otherwise, uh, things become definitely lighter. High pressure building over the Bering Strait, 1,025 millibar low. So winds go light, skies clear, and conditions much calmer as the main action uh, remains down here over the southwest coast and extends eastward along that frontal boundary. The uh, rainfall staying along and north of the Alaska Range. Some might try to sneak in across the western Alaska Range into western Cook Inlet but uh, should be pretty light and not make it any farther to the east. Otherwise, uh, varying amounts of clouds will spread across the southern uh, North Gulf Coast, southern Alaska. Stays fair and dry over Kodiak Island. No change for the panhandle. Maybe some drizzle showing up with uh, thick fog along and off the coast. And then for the uh, outlook on for tomorrow, again, this uh, almost stationary frontal boundary start uh, weakening here. The rainfall not nearly as heavy, especially over the eastern quadrant there into Canada, but it uh, continues there, uh, mostly along the Alaska Range, back into the Cuscombe Valley, yukon Cuscombe Delta, mostly sunny tomorrow over the northern interior, with the exception being the eastern Beaufort Sea coast and northeast North Slope due to that trough lingering there, but conditions improving, winds coming down uh, into the afternoon. And out in the west here, just a very weak low over the Bering Sea that persists. Uh, could hardly draw this in, just barely a frontal boundary here with that, but there is some precipitation with it, but much lighter. Still could be some moderate amounts here with this warm front, uh, say in the, over the Cusquam Mountains, but lighter and more showery here in the eastern part, but a lot of clouds, partly sunny to the south, mostly sunny to the north, about sums it up, and another dry day with uh, low clouds and fog along the coast and possibly inner channels in the morning, but that'll burn off to sunshine in the afternoon. And for lows tonight down there, uh, lower to mid-50s for the southeast coast, lower to mid-50s Copper River Basin, mid to upper 50s South Central Alaska, upper 30s showing up uh, here at, uh, well that's Anatovic there, forecast low 38, otherwise near 40 for the Arctic coast, followed by highs in the lower to mid-70s, the so Sitna Valley, Northern Cook Inlet, uh, Kenai Peninsula, mid to upper 70s possibly for the Copper River Basin, and lower 70s in the southern panhandle, uh, 65 to 70 elsewhere, and upper 50s out in the Aleutians for the lows the following morning. A little chillier now, lower to mid 30s into the Brooks Range, uh, and upper 30s there along the Arctic coast, near 40 back to the west, uh, 50s over southern Alaska, and the panhandle, uh, mid to upper 50s, or generally in the 50s there, anywhere from 52 to 58, and lows near 50 out over the Aleutians. And for the highs for Monday afternoon, not too bad, not much warmer near lows, mid to upper 50s for the Aleutians there, and well into the 70s. Kenai Peninsula, South Central Alaska, Susitna Valley, 70s, 75 to 80, Copper River Basin, 
and definitely into the 70s here for the southeast coast, lower to mid, and uh, holding in the 60s over the central and eastern interior of the state, while the Arctic slope, 45 to 50. And now, aviation weather around Alaska. First line weather graphic tomorrow, lots of IFR here. Uh, central southern Bering Sea Aleutians into the southwest interior, across, or into the Cuscombe Valley and up to the western Alaska range. Uh, probably won't cross the mountains as far as IFR goes, or marginal as well. VFR, Bristol Bay, northern Kodiak Island, Fognac Island, in up across south central Alaska. Starting out with some IFR here, Talkeetnas along the Alaska Range. Mostly VFR and a narrow swath in the interior. And then IFR, Ko Koyukuk, Kobuk Valley, back across the Brooks Range, north slope to the Arctic coast. IFR uh, along the southeast coast, pushing inland in some areas uh, tomorrow morning. And by the afternoon, that should uh, pull back to the coastline. So if you're right along the coastline, you may stay in the fog and low clouds most of the day. Otherwise, the inside water is looking pretty good, VFR. VFR to North Gulf Coast, uh, actually west of Cape Yakutaga into Prince William Sound, Kenai Peninsula. Lingering uh, marginal VFR here along uh, the, well, from Windy Pass on down the western Alaska Range, Denali Park and those areas. Uh, so it'll be pretty well socked in there up around Denali tomorrow. And uh, VFR, central interior, north of the Brooks Range, north slope marginal, and some IFR just grazing the central Arctic coast. And for the uh, Monday morning outlook, we've got uh, more IFR sliding in that uh, frontal boundary, kind of stationary in this area here. Uh, all the moisture back here to the west and tapers off as you head east. So the IFR, Yukon, Cuscombe Delta, Southwest Mountains, and again, in across uh, the Cuscombe Valley there into uh, the Western Alaska Range, but staying VFR, Cook Inlet to Prince William Sound. And marginal VFR along the mountains here, the Eastern Alaska Range down toward the Talkeetnas. No change for the Southeast Coast and the Arctic Coast, Central Coast there has a chance of IFR for the afternoon. That pulls back, probably marginal VFR, uh, just right along the east side there to about Point Barrow. VFR across the north slope into the Brooks Range and the northern Kobuk Koyukuk Valleys back out to the northwest coast. Kotzebue, Selawick, and uh, Point Hope all looking VFR for the day uh, Monday afternoon. IFR still along the southwest coast pushing in across Norton Sound, crossing the Lotto Hills, and then uh, kind of meandering as it gets in toward the central interior areas. Otherwise, uh, south of the mountains, VFR down to the north Gulf Coast. Kodiak mostly VFR. And again, the low clouds fog hanging along or off the southeast coast. Passes Anatovic uh, IFR tomorrow, becoming VFR, so improving uh, throughout the day. And for uh, Adigan, same trend, uh, IFR, uh, maybe a little slower becoming VFR, but should be uh, some point in the afternoon go VFR, if not sooner. And for Lake Clark and Merrill, Marshall VFR, lowest flying conditions will be on both western entrances. Eastern entrances should stay VFR. And for rainy, that same uh, pattern, lowest conditions, western entrance, uh, VFR out the east side and into the valley. And for windy, IFR, it looks like uh, occasionally or mostly throughout the uh, morning and even the afternoon. And for Isabel, IFR slowly becoming marginal VFR with VFR in the southern entrance. And for Mentasta, I'll go kind of uh, marginally marginal tomorrow. And for Tanita, VFR. Portage VFR, Chilkoot and White VFR once again. Freezing levels, 2,000 feet here, pushed southward here along the, uh, or well, across the north slope to the Brooks Range. And uh, quite a gradient though across northern Alaska, all the way up to 10,000 feet there across the central interior, back to, along to about Nome. And 12,000 feet will, or 32 degrees will occur about 12,000 feet here over Anchorage, uh, back toward Bethel and 14,000 feet there for Kodiak Island, the Alaska Peninsula, and right along the Aleutians. Icing, looking like this, uh, not um, a narrower, drier, somewhat drier flow here, a batch of moisture, uh, but still some areas of considerable moderate rime icing mixed in with the uh, lighter stuff here into the central interior, tapering off as you head east. And for the jet stream, ridge here centered south, southeast of Kodiak Island, really ridged in across the panhandle there. Northerly, or westerlies across central interior, 70 to 90 knots, southwest 80 to 90 for the east central Aleutians. And for 9,000 feet, we've got westerlies 25 to 35 in the interior here. 
35 to start there on the eastern Arctic coast, slowly diminishing in the afternoon, 3,000 feet, same pattern, lighter winds though, high pressure up on the northwest coast and southwest of Kodiak Island, turbulence. Occasional moderate chop here, eastern interior, eastern Arctic coast uh, early on through the afternoon and the Fox Islands. On March 11, 2011, a powerful tsunami hit Japan, destroying cities and villages. As the water receded back into the ocean, it pulled what remained of buildings, cars, boats, and homes along with it. Scrap metals, plastics, and objects of all shapes and sizes either sank near the shore or floated away. In the days that followed, large masses of floating debris could easily be seen by satellite imagery and aerial photos. In the wake of this disaster, NOAA is assessing the potential impact that the debris may have on U.S. shores. So, where will this debris go, and when will it get there? To help answer those questions, scientists are using computer models to estimate the debris's path, using its starting location in the tsunami zone and historical weather and ocean conditions. The findings are that some debris could pass near or wash ashore in the northwestern Hawaiian Islands as early as this winter. Debris may also approach the west coast of the United States in 2013 and potentially circle back to the main Hawaiian Islands in 2014. But scientists caution that there are limitations to what computer models can tell us. Now that the debris has moved out of satellite view, and with currents and winds in the Pacific constantly changing, there is no guarantee that the debris will stay on the predicted path. Items will sink along the way, or break up and disperse in many directions. Despite these unknowns, NOAA and its partners are collecting data, assessing possible impacts, and making preparations in case debris does wash ashore. The 2011 tsunami in Japan reminds us that the devastation that happens on land can also become a marine debris issue at sea. Imagine all of this underwater. In a major tsunami, it could happen. In this part of Washington state, it's happened before, hundreds of years ago. Sometime in the future, it will likely happen again. But we can be ready. If a tsunami strikes, this school will provide a place for people to ride it out above the waves. We're in Westport, Washington, and right behind me is the very first tsunami vertical evacuation center in the United States. Tsunamis are a potential hazard for low-lying coastal areas. That's why many coastal communities have plans in place to get people to safety, high ground or inland, where they can be beyond the reach of a tsunami. Often there are signs showing where to go and where to gather. Most tsunamis are caused by underwater earthquakes along subduction zones, where two of Earth's plates collide and one is forced under the other. Westport and other Pacific Northwest coastal communities are especially at risk because one of these zones lies just offshore. It's called the Cascadia Subduction Zone. An earthquake here caused a tsunami in 1700 that flooded shores as far away as Japan. Experts say it's just a matter of time before it happens again. Since the subduction zone is so close, a tsunami like the one in 1700 could strike before people in some low-lying areas could get to high ground or inland. And Westport doesn't have a lot of high ground or easy routes inland. If we get an earthquake or a tsunami, we're gonna get a lot of water in the area really quickly, and we needed a place to go. So our community 
built this brand new school and above our gym and cafeteria, we have a roof. And so the idea is that we'll get all of our students up and anybody from the community who needs to get up, they can get up there as well. Ocosta Elementary School might seem like a normal school, but look more closely. It's engineered to withstand monster waves. Tsunami vertical evacuation shelters must be able to resist the powerful forces that a tsunami brings. Hydrodynamic, buoyant, hydrostatic, and debris impact forces and strong currents. They're also designed to help people get to safety quickly. There are four big staircases on each corner of the building. And each one of those staircases is eight feet wide and we can get the whole school evacuated in about four and a half minutes. Everybody should be at a zero. On the roof of the building, there is water and food and buckets and shelters and tarps and blankets and different things so that we can be up there for two, three, maybe four days while we wait for rescue. You can go to the top and you know you'll be safe. It, it feels really nice to have a special building because you feel protected. This community decided that a tsunami evacuation center was important because they didn't have anywhere to go and they decided to use their money to build the building. The additional cost is anywhere between 10 and 20% of the actual building cost itself. And that's really a sound investment for a lot of protection. You may be there a while, but you're safe and you're secure, and that's the most important thing. And now, marine weather around Alaska. Welcome back, sea ice analysis. As you can see here, not a lot on the chart uh, at this scale anyway, pretty wide open, a fair distance off the Arctic coast there and almost all the way back to Wrangell Island and uh, up toward Banks Island. And you start running into some more ice, but all uh, just about sea ice free here in this entire area. So it, it, it's on the verge of becoming the no sea ice chart. Moving on to coastal water forecast, south coast, northeast or northwest, 20 knots, seas at about five to six feet, and lighter winds as you head up the coastline, north coast, west at 10, five foot seas, and light north to northwest uh, winds over the central, southern, inside waters, while Cook, or, uh, Lynn Canal Glacier Bay, south 15. And those uh, stay south, but become light there for Lynn Canal, uh, mostly south at 10 or variable to south, two foot seas all through the inside waters or winds will be north to northwest at 10 knots. South coast for Monday, northwest 15 to 20 knots and the north coast northwest 10 to 15 knots with six foot seas. Prince William Sound, light westerlies tomorrow with slight seas, otherwise the north gulf, eastern north gulf coast here west at 15. Uh, double that though for small craft advisories, west winds 30 knots for the western north gulf coast. It'll see 7 feet 25 and 7 feet for the Barren Islands and Kamishak Bay westerlies at 20 knots with 7 foot seas. Southern Cook Inlet sees up to 7 feet with those 20 knot southwest winds and that extends all the way up in north of the Forelands and will pull the seas down to about 6 feet though. And then for Monday, southwest 15, northern Cook Inlet sees down to 3 feet, southwest 20 and a little reduction in the sea heights there that's five feet for Southern Cook Inlet, small craft advisories, Kamishak Bay, the Barren Islands, and the western North Gulf Coast. Westerlies, 25 to 30 knots with seas uh, seven to eight feet. Prince William Sound, no change, light west winds, and eastern North Gulf Coast, west at 15. Kodiak Island, west southwest, 25 knots tomorrow, including Shelikoff Strait. That's where the highest seas will be at nine feet. Uh, Sitkanak to Castle Cape, southwest 20. Castle Cape to Cape Sarachev, south 20. And small craft advisories, a much stiffer wind there in the Bering Sea side of the peninsula, south 30 knots with eight foot seas and print, or, uh, <laughs> uh, Bristol Bay, southwest of 20. And for the next day, Monday, southwest 15, a little lighter winds here for Bristol Bay on Monday, seas down to four feet. Small craft advisories continue for the Bering Sea side of the Alaska Peninsula, southwest 15, 
uh, Cape Sarachev to Castle Cape, Castle Cape to Sitkanak, west at 20, and the east side of Kodiak, west 25 knots, so small craft advisories continue there as well as Shelikov Strait, speeds down a little, but uh, still 25 knots with 7 foot seas. For the western Aleutians, pretty light winds, uh, 10 knots there west of Kiska Island, then Kiska over toward uh, Adak, southwest 15, Adak and Athka specifically, south to southwest, 10 to 15 knots, 4 to 7 foot seas, and uh, markedly windier here with a good southerly stiff wind at 30 knots there for Unalaska Island with seas running 9 to 12 feet. And for Monday, still small craft advisories, both Umaka and Unalaska Island, 25 to 30 knots southerly winds with seas 7 to 10 feet. Really light winds laying down uh, south 10 knots for the central Aleutians, Adak and Athka, south 10 knots from Adak over to uh, Kiska and Kiska to Shimia, south winds 10 knots, seas 5 feet. Southwest coast tomorrow, south of Nunavak Island, southerly is at 25 knots, northeast 25 for northern, uh, the, the northern Bering Sea area, south 20 for the Pribilofs, northeast 20, St. Lawrence Island. I'll look for Monday, small craft advisories here, uh, Yukon Delta coast, north of Nunavak Island though, southwest 15, and that extends up into Norton Sound, but St. Lawrence Island swinging around to northeast at 15, southeast 15, St. Matthew Island, and south 20 for the Pribilofs. Eastern Beaufort Sea Coast starting out quite windy, especially early on. Good gales uh, tonight, or kicking in tonight, and uh, continuing tomorrow. 40 knots out of the west for the uh, extreme eastern zone there. And then small craft advisories, 30 knot winds on the west side down to 20 on the central coast. Northwest 15 on the west side, and then variable at 10 from Cape Beaufort down to Tin City or Wales. And for the uh, Monday outlook, Wales to Cape Thompson, northeast at 10, Cape Thompson up the west side. Wet east at 15, and then light easterlies on the central coast, and north at 10, the east side over to demarcation point. Still northwest, down to 20 knots, so with four foot seas. For tonight, again, uh, wind advisory there for the eastern stretch of the Arctic coast. Again, could see gusts 50 miles an hour with this trough as that system pulls off to the east, but high pressure builds in, much lighter winds, drier conditions, Seward Peninsula, St. Lawrence Island, northwest coast. In the interior, this front uh, keeps rain, uh, Tanana Valley. These forecasts are for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go fly. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbor master before you go boating.